another question that I have for you is, can everybody see my screen okay? All right, so it's looking all right. Perfect. Now I'm just trying to get this, trying to get my chat to work here so that we can talk. All right, so we are going to get started on this. Sorry, my screen changed. Um, we are, we're here today to talk about the planning project. A couple of things just about the webinar in general before we discuss actually the planning project is that I will be monitoring the chat. Um, as we as I go through, you are certainly welcome to put your questions into the, the chat feature of Zoom, you know, if you have questions that come along. I'm not going to stop the, you know, um, stop the portion that I'm talking about at the time that you might be asking the question, but I will do when I when it comes to an obvious time to pause, like when we're going to go to a screen change or, you know, or something like that, then I will go through, um, go through the, the, the questions that popped up on the chat. I'll try to remember to repeat the question that was asked and then and give the answer if I can. Um, so just, you know, like I said, use the chat. I know Zoom has like chat and Q&A and other features, but I'm really eyeballing the chat while we're doing um, this. So try, if you can, to please use that for your question. So I, I, I don't want to miss any questions and I, I only see the, ch you know, the chat on my screen as we go along. So again, I will stop throughout and then we will have some, you know, time at the end. So if you want, if I for some reason missed your question, or if you have some questions about the planning project, you can certainly ask, we'll have some plenty of time um, to do that at the end. So again, welcome to our webinar today. We are discussing um, the, the newer feature that we have in WorkMidjig, which we are calling the planning project. Um, the, really the long term of that is really the resource planning project where you're able to you know, plan, some, plan your resources out for an extended period of time for a commitment to a um, to a client, right? Um, you will find the planning project underneath the project manager area here. So I'm sure you've all noticed the new dot that shows up under there for the planning project. And of course, the ability to click the plus sign here to add a new planning project. So what we're going to go over today, of course, is I'm going to create a new planning project. We're going to talk about, you know, the um, differences between the planning project and a regular project. We're going to set one up. We're even going to estimate to that point, activate it. And then I'll show you the support screens that go along with that planning project, how to look at this at the Creative Today page, how to look at this information on the staff schedule screen, um, even how this information will appear, you know, again, on like the assignment management. After that, we'll talk a, a little bit about um, the ability to link projects to the planning project. And then, um, at the end, I'll show you, um, you know, well, I can't really show you it in action, but I'll show you the new feature. So if you've ever attended a planning project webinar before, since then we've added a new feature um, to the planning project and I'll show you that um, along the way. Um, so that's my plan for today. And so the first thing I'm going to do is of course, we need to create a planning project. So I'm going to click the plus sign right here to start a new planning project. I'm sorry, my. My, my chat's of course going to cover half of what I'm looking at. But um, so the first area here is the, you know, of course the client. This first page right here should look a little bit reminiscent of creating any project in work in Majig, right? So we the only difference between here and a regular project will be some of these fields are a little bit um, different. For instance, we are requiring a due date. You have to put a due date in on the planning project. And we are do not have the ability to copy from a template. Um, you can copy from a previous planning project. If you currently have one in your system, you can create a new one based off of that one, or you would just generate one from scratch. So those are some of the differences. You still have your system settings that you can go in and require some of the similar things that you can in a project. I want to fill out the account manager field here or something like that. Um, instead of having a default in, you can add those items here. But we're going to pick our client, right? And it brings over our contact. And uh, we'll just put in our um, project name. Again, I have the project number field. If you don't fill out the project number field, the system, just like a regular project, will fill out the project number for you. The planning project does use the same numbering method as the um, a regular project. So if you want your planning projects to have a different numbering method or diff, you know, different number 
or something that indicates, you know, from the look of it that it's a planning project, you can certainly type in a project number here. Other than that, it's going to use your typical project numbering method. I am not going to copy from another planning project. I'm just going to create this one from scratch. I can put in my project description. And this is where my, my chat's kind of getting in the way. Um, and then, of course, as you can see, this is my start date. And then I would put in a due date. Now, again, the idea of the planning project, again, it, it, you know, we kind of came up with the idea of this when people were talking about, I have a year long retainer and I don't really want to necessarily say I bill a thousand dollars a month. I want to offer so many hours per month. Right. So again, you know, the idea of the planning project, it doesn't have to be a year. It could be a month. It could be three months. It could be six months, but that's why the due date is, um, required is because again we're kind of creating this idea based off of a, a you know a contracted amount of time so i'm just going to put in um through the end of july just for reasons i you know but here I, i'll just put that information in and um, we'll make it longer we'll do the end of september and then i'm just going to hit save right here okay now you'll notice that when I get into this again, looks like a project. Um, the difference, of course, is I have you know a couple of differences here. Is I have one tab here for schedule and estimate, and another difference, of course, is I have the linked projects feature down here, which we'll get to later, I promise. But when I'm setting up my planning project, I'm going to go into my schedule estimate, and you'll notice I I don't have tasks, right? We're not creating tasks or a timeline for a planning project. We're planning out our resource, uh, you know, for. Um, future date. So I go and add an assignment. Now I have a couple of options here and I'm going to show you all of the different options that you can do here on this planning project. So the first one could be that I could pick the um, a service, right? Well, I promised them that we would give them, and I, I like to make stuff up here, so um, that I'm going to give them, you know, like editing. I don't know who's going to do the editing, but I'm going to give them for that amount of time I'm going to give them the percent assigned. I can say I'm going to give 50% of the editing time to this client, right? So what that does is, of course, it takes a 40-hour work week, just so you know, and it then calculates to say how much would that be. Now I get 16 this week because it's already Tuesday, and on you know the rest of the week I'll get 20 hours, right? So that's that's kind of saying I'm percentage assigned, of, you know, of editing. This client is getting 50% of our editing. Oh, that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it, of course, is I can sit there and I can say, well, I have, I'm going to give them some account management time and my Yosemite know, Sam is going to do that account management time. I'm, I'm promising them this time and I can promise them a total number of hours, right? And I, I really don't remember how much time span I pick, but I can pick, you know, 300 and it'll go through and it will allocate those hours. Okay. So last but not least, of course, is I can, um, again, you know, I can pick my um, person who will bring in their default service, right? And I can just type in how much out, how many hours I want to give this person per week. And it can fluctuate, right? And again, by the way, you can modify any of these up here. It's not like you can't click into a week and, and modify that. But if you're not 100% sure what you're going to do from the get go, of course, you can come in and you can just start typing and you can say, oh, this week's going to be busy. And, you know, and you can just go through and you can add this information all the way through. I don't think you guys need to watch me type this information all the way through, but that's how you can go through. So you can promise them, you know, again, you you can say, well, you know what, we're going to do editing. And, you know, um, I, again, I'm just, this is for me planning my resourcing, right? It, it's not really me sitting there, you know, tying somebody up per se. It's just, I know that I need to give them 50% of our editing. Or if you do know, like, oh yeah, the, your account managers, you have somebody, Sam, and um, I'm going to give you, you know, 20 hours a week, approximately, of account management time. I'm, I can build that out. Okay, so you're able to, you know, this is kind of how you can build this schedule right here. And again, sorry, and I, you know, when I'm done, I can hit save. Again, you can come in and make these modifications if you want to. You can click into any week and you can modify those. When you're doing this, of course, the next step that you can go through is you can hit more and you can create estimate. Now we're going to do that next. But before I go there, I'm going to ask anyone who has questions that if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, put them in the chat. OK, somebody did say they can only see schedule on their projects. Now, if they're on a planning project, it should say schedule estimate. Um, if you're on a regular project, it would just say schedule. Okay, let's see. 
These cannot, somebody asked if they can link to opportunities and currently they cannot. Um, so we, that, that's kind of a, um, you know, it's been a question that's asked a couple of times. What I generally tell people when, when WorkMajig isn't doing something that you might find to be valuable, um, you certainly can email in to support at workmajig.com and you can give us our, your use case to how you would use this going, creating an opportunity and then generating a planning project off of that opportunity. So never hesitate to do that. I can just tell you currently that no, we do not link planning projects. I'll just tell you right up front, do not link to opportunities and they do not link to campaigns. Okay. They're kind of, again, you know, an island on their own um, right there. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to move forward. I don't see any other questions that have popped up, but again, don't hesitate. If the question, if you think of a question as I'm going through, don't hesitate to put it in there, and I, I will stop at the appropriate time to answer those questions. So the next step up again, this is how I can generate, you know, generate my schedule right here. I can create an estimate. Do you have to? Absolutely, do not. But if you wanted to create an estimate, and when I click on create estimate. You'll see again, I have my estimate name. I have all the normal um, features in here. You are tied to being able to only do a task and service estimate, which is the recommended estimating um, way to do anyway. So I'm gonna click save on here. And you'll notice it automatically just brings my labor in, right? It, it just assumes that if I estimated though, you know, if I put in those hours, then it's going to bring in my estimated labor for me. I don't have to pull from schedule or anything like that. It just automatically assumes that this is the, again, the kind of the background, that's the name of my task, and here's the services that I provided. And so it gives me the amount for my labor. Okay. Can you make adjustments? Of course you can, right? It's work jig So of course you can make certain, you know, adjustments to anything like that. Um, just like a, any other project, the rate is pulled from the, the project setup, right? So if the project setup had a rate, you know, get the rate from service or get rate from service rate sheet, that's how the rate will be determined on your estimate. You can, you know, um, change those rates right there. Okay. You'll notice again, it's not really letting you um, change your hours. Honestly, if you're going to change your hours, you should be doing that at the schedule and, and then re-pulling in your um, estimate right on there. And this isn't part of the planning project, so we're not going to go into this in detail, but you can, of course, estimate expenses at the planning project level, right? Um, and I'm going to just approve my estimate so I can have a budget. Somebody was asking if you can push. Um, you uh, Currently, you cannot push from, like, if you create the estimate first and then um, go in and want to push to the schedule, you cannot. You'll actually notice that the estimate option is not available until you put something into your schedule. Okay, so that's an that's an interesting question. That's actually the first time that question has been brought up to us. So you can certainly, um, again, if that is something that you find would be really useful to you, you can certainly, um, you know, email that in as an enhancement suggestion. We would kind of have to kick that around to see how that would work with the weekly weekly bucketing. But, you know, again, something to think about. So that was just a question that somebody asked, but currently, no. <laughs> um, so again, this is, you know, here's my schedule screen. I, you know, I've gone through, I've created my estimate. You can create a change order estimate. You view and edit your estimates and things like that. All right, so that is my um, schedule estimate area here. We do have project settings. These project settings are, a little bit different than um, you know than a regular project because you can see I have a little bit less menu here. But here's again my typical project settings, right? My start date to my complete date is here. Um, my project description would be here. My client information under my accounting tab. Of course, you can close these. You can set these to be non-billable. You might want a resource plan for your own agency, right? Well, I'm going to need this much time or something like that. Or you, so you can, or for a client who's non you know, non-billable time, you can, of course, um, put that information, you know, um, create that as non-billable. And then last but not least is your billing method. So this one is going to get a little bit different here, just for the simple fact that we do have that feature called linked projects, which we haven't gotten to yet. But are you planning on, again, as we're creating this with my $79,000 plus change estimate, are you planning to bill the client based on this planning project to say, hey, again, you know, think back, this all started from retainers, right? So if we, we created this amount to bill, are you going to bill that amount based on what is put onto this planning project? Or, you know, if we get to, when we get to that point of, of billing, um, creating projects that are linked to it, do you want to bill the plan $79,000 and then any 
jobs that you put against this, um, would you bill them separately, right? So you do have the ability to, to make that determination. Billing for a planning project is truly not any different than billing a regular project. So when you say only bill the plan, right? We're just gonna stick with that right now. Am I gonna bill this fixed fee? Or do I wanna bill this time and materials? Because of course we're expecting people to put their time against you know, the planning project if you're, if you're going to use it that way. So if you bill fixed fee, you do have the ability right here to generate that billing schedule based off that estimated amount, right? How often are you going to do, wanna do this as a, um, you know, a monthly bill, then you would create this billing schedule. If you're gonna bill actuals, of course, you would put in your time and materials, right? So again, we're, you know, kind of thinking that you would be saying, well, I'm, you know, this is a, you know, how, let's say a four month, I can't even remember how many months I picked, that's bad, but, you know, so we could say, well, I'm gonna bill 25%, you know, and we're gonna start that billing, you know, today, right? You could put that in and copy and copy and copy, right? So you would be able to kind of generate, you know, the bills, that's how much we're gonna bill per month for the number of hours that we have contracted with them to do. So then this is how you can, and again, can you modify that billing schedule and change the dollar amount? Yes. We front load at the beginning, it gets a little less at the end, or it's a little less in the beginning, and then we, you know, load it at the end. So you can certainly do that. And this is where you get your labor rate from, right? I, I mine is set to get rate from service that defaulted in from my client. And so that's how my rates were determined on my estimate and how my rates will be determined when time entry is put against this. Okay. So I'm going to pause for just a minute because I see a couple of questions and this is a good time to pause popping up in my um, chat. So um, someone is asking, can time charge to these projects be transferred to regular projects and vice versa, build to regular projects? Yes, the, when we get towards the billing and transaction screen of the planning project, they're like, I have to say 100% the same as a regular project. There's really nothing different about them. Um, at that point in time. So yes, yes, you certainly can. Um, so somebody's asking me, talking about um, use cases for the planning tool. So really, you know, one of the, again, the idea of the planning, this planning project came up where people, a lot of people were coming to us saying, or, and especially when we train and we talk about retainers, we say, you know, we use the example, oh, well, you know, you bill them $5,000 a month for the next 12 months because, um, you know, you have, you're doing their, I might've said this a little high, but you're doing their web maintenance or you're doing their PR or you're doing, you know, following their social medias, right? Like you're, you're doing the social media content type thing. So, you know, and then people tell us all the time, oh, well, I don't, we don't really just bill 5,000 a month. We give them so many hours a month, right? For that functionality. And so when we, you know, so that's where that was the kind of the, the starting point of where the planning project came into play. So instead of me saying $5,000 a month, I'm telling you, here's a hundred hours a week or a hundred hours a month, right? And those hundred hours a month, what happens? They translate to dollars, right? And those dollars, of course, are based on how much you bill, would bill per hour for the, that rate. So again, that's where the labor rates would come into play. If you have a special rate for someone that you're promising them $100 a month, then that's where, so that's where the planning project stemmed from is instead of saying, I'm going to bill you 5,000 a month, I'm going to give you hundred hours a month. Okay. Um, hopefully that, that helped just a little bit. So that, again, that's the, the way to create that scenario. And then somebody else asked, does the assigned time show as task tiles? Oh, you're dumping ahead. I'm going to get to that in actually just a second. So absolutely it will show in all of those areas. And I'm going to show you those actually right now. So they're asking about resource management and creative today. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to hit save right here. I think I'm going to hit save. There we go. Um, I have one more thing I have to do, of course, is I, I mean, my team, by the way, of course, is already, you know, is set up by who is assigned, right? I don't have anyone currently doing the editing for this, but it, um, I, that's okay. That's kind of how I want it planned, but you can set up your team, um, right? I have to do one more thing before we can talk about resource management, of course, is I need to update my project status. As I'm setting this up, my project status is just in the new status. If I want this to again, start to populate my, my creative today and my traffic screens, I need to change my status to a status that allows that. So I'm gonna update the status of my planning project. So let's talk about all the different places that this will show up for you to see. Of course, if I go back to my menu and I click on my planning project area here, my planning project will show up in the planning project dot, right? It's kind of like your project dashboard. Now, what, you know, you might say, well, I don't really want to look at, 
a planning project dot and a project dot. So you can actually look at your planning projects here. You would be able to see them amongst all your regular projects. I don't have any yet. We'll get there. Um, if you go to more in your system settings, you do have the ability to include planning projects on your project dot. So if you want to see them intermingled because you don't want to, there's no difference between the two, you can view them all in this one dot right here and access, access them from there. Okay. So that's, you know, again, those are those, the two typical dots right there. They also will show up in your project views. We did add um, in WorkMajig the ability to say planning project equals yes or planning project equals no, things like that. So you can create, you know, if you go to your today PM and you go to your project views, which I haven't created one, maybe I should have thought about that ahead of time. But if you go into like, you know, run your views here, you can modify and add filters or columns for planning project information. So you can see planning project is yes or no, planning project full name, planning project name, things like that. So you are able, definitely able to um, see this information in your views separated out from the others. But where does all this show and how do I manage my planning project, right? That, that's the question that's being asked. What we definitely recommend is in your creative today page, if you're going to be looking you using the planning projects, keep in mind that when I showed this to you, we were doing weekly buckets, right? I can look at this in a regular task card view, but what happens when I look at it in a task card view is it shows that I have a hundred days for it to be due, right? Um, you know, so, I assign myself hours, but it has 100 you know, days. So what we really recommend is that you look at it in the um, tile view, because the tile view is going to show you, um, again, zero hours work this week, 16.44 hours remaining this week, right? So still doing 100 days, but it's 16.44 hours remaining this week. So it's not going to add up my, you know, my 300 hours that I put in there. It's just telling you, this is what you have to do this week. And of course, with this tile view, if you have the, the custom column sets set, you know, here is you can drag, you know, somebody you're, you know, you can drag them or they can be displayed in other columns. I need you to work on this today. I need you, you know, um, things like that. So I can, you know, drag it back and forth. This is a priority. Um, whatever your column sets might be, because those are customizable totally different webinar, but those are customizable. So you can make specific columns, you know, to move that information into. So highly recommend that when you're looking at your Creative Today page, that you're viewing this information in the tile view to get the most information out of it. Just like any other assignment or anything, you can click on it and you can add a time entry, right? So I can go in and say, I worked an hour and, you know, um, and I can put in my time entry. Now, one thing you'll notice that I don't have the ability to do when I added that time entry, which I know it went pretty fast. I do not have the ability to mark this as complete, right? Because I can't really mark, I, there's, can't mark the task as complete on there. So you don't have the ability to mark that assignment as complete. It will be a rolling assignment that, that stays on your Creative Today page until, of course, the end of the project, right? So that's again how you would be able to access this information at the creative level. Um, the other area that was discussed, of course, is the resource management. Um, I'm going to start with assignment management. So if we look at assignment management, here it is, right? It's showing this information. And this, of course, is if you have your resource manager, project manager, whoever comes in and, and manages this day. Again, remember, this is you know, it's going on for months and months. This is again where somebody, not the creative, could move this to a, do this today. This is a priority. Whatever your column sets might be, they would be able to make these adjustments, right, and move them back and forth. You know, through this pile. So I can again, I can you know do this today. It really, doesn't change the um, you know the status of the the assignment itself. It's just saying it's just going to show reflect back on the creative person that this is a priority and do this today. Okay, so again, flip right back there and go to my creative today and you'll see now it's showing up under my do this today. Okay, now same thing when I get to under my resource manager and I get to my staff schedule screen. You know, when I look at my staff schedule screen, then you'll be able to look at it here, right? I highly recommend with the staff schedule screen that you look at things in the week view when we're, especially when we're managing our, you know, our planning project, because everything is done in that weekly 
budget or that weekly bucket, right? So you'll be able to see it right here. All right. So that is my, um, you know, how my staff schedule, I click into it again, it's going to show not a whole lot different, it just shows you the total. Um, it shows you, you know, again, the basic information that was put in here. All right. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, I'm going to stop here. The, um, and I'm going to read this question. And then I'm going to, let's see. Okay, so pretty much um, there, the question that's being asked is if all the hours are used in a week by a person, um, you know, do they get re or not used? Do they get redistributed? Good question. I'm going to get to that one. We did add a new feature for rolling over unused hours, and I'll show you that. That's kind of what I was referencing is I can't really show you that in action because you kind of have to wait for the week. It doesn't happen on a day. It happens at the end of the week. And I actually created an example last week so that you would be able to see kind of what it looks like in general. Um, so what we don't do, though, is if they overwork, we don't steal hours from another week, right? So if they overwork it, just like anything else, well, you overworked it. Um, if they underwork, then there is the option to roll those hours over. And yes, the recording, somebody's asking if the recording will be available. Absolutely, the recording should be available in the next couple of days on our support site under webinars. So it will be. Um, so here's the staff schedule screen. Again, this information, of course, is translating to the staff schedule screen. Remember editing. I didn't have anyone assigned to editing. So you'll see again that editing still gets reflected on my staff schedule screen. This is what we're talking about with that resource management planning, right? If I looked at this three months out, I would be able to see that I need somebody to do editing for 20 hours a week for the next three months, right? I've made that commitment. I didn't make a commitment on who was going to do it. I just made a commitment that I that needs to be done. And then of course I can decide who does my editing and I can add, you know, and I can assign them and add them. So that brings me back to another um, area here. So we're gonna pop back into my planning project. And I'm just gonna show you, like if I click here, you'll notice that I have a little pencil. And with this pencil right here, I can click, and this is where my, my chat's gonna get in my way again, but I am able to reassign. Like if I sit there and I say, oh yeah, my, <laughs> Fun to say, Foghorn Leghorn is assigned to do this media planning, um, you know, on this um, on this project here. But I realize that they're on vacation, right, for two weeks out of that. So I can say, well, I want to reassign this information to, you know, Daffy Duck, and but only for, you know, that this week or something like that, right? So I can click save, um, and what it does, of course, is it adds Daffy Duck media planning. And you'll notice Daffy Duck is assigned those 20 hours. And you'll notice that Foghorn Leghorn still keeps all the other hours, right? Except for, you know, that 20 hours is now assigned to Daffy Duck. Okay. So that's how reassigning has to work in here, right? There's, you know, it, it's a little bit more complex just for the simple fact, again, that we're doing these weekly buckets and it's this long time frame. So you definitely are able to move those um, hours around to somebody else. Again, if you realize that somebody's going to be on vacation and this will reflect on their creative today page and on the staff schedule and things like that, because these hours now belong to Daffy Duck and not Foghorn Leghorn for that week. Okay. Um, and then somebody is asking about adjusting the dates in here. You can certainly adjust the dates if necessary. It will let you. Um, but you, again, might need to go in and modify your hours and things like that. So if your start date, if I mean, again, depending on how far you move it, um, will then depend on um, you know, again, what might happen to your project schedule. So it, that that's something that, I can't, I can't say that I've done a lot of, of research or work on that, modifying the dates. You might have to go in and reset up your schedule to, to modify your hours if you realize that now your hours are incorrect because the dates have started. Um, so a couple of questions I had. Um, it, it, people are asking, is the planning method really only recommended for retainer jobs? Uh, that's, that's how it started, but I don't think that's how necessarily people are using it. Again, it, it's a way for them to plan their resources out for a long, you know, for plan it out. I know for a fact that my person here is going to do, you know, um, 10 hours a week for these five different clients or something like that. And I want that to reflect in my staff schedule before I 
um, you know, before I start putting in other projects and things like that. Um, do you have to bill in a retainer method? No. Um, in fact, planning project doesn't have a billing method of retainer. It has a fixed fee billing schedule. But do you have to bill fixed fee? No. You you can certainly just hey you only you I'm kind of planned for you to do ten hours, but you did five right you know or something like that. So I'm going to bill accordingly. And then someone else is asking how overages are handled. Overages are handled just like any other project, right? So I I allocated you ten hours a week. You did fifteen. I can only bill ten. Right. So are you billing fixed fee or are you billing time and materials? If you're billing fixed fee, that's fine. You know, you're those those extra five hours are just going to go against the profitability of the project. Right. If you're billing time and materials, you might have to write off those extra five and, and bill the actuals. Right. So, again, just like a regular project, we don't you know, we don't account for that in the allocation. We don't change that in the allocation. It'll be an allocation versus actuals on, on the planning project. So. Um, now, I think I was, okay, Steph's schedule. So one other thing that I was going to talk about, and then we'll talk about our rolling over, is, is again, I, I kind of made a plan, you know, for the, these, um, you know, the, the resource management. Again, depending on how you want to use that, uh, yeah, 10 hours a week, you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be keeping up with their social media, or you're supposed to be doing their PR and, 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 and stuff like that. So you kind of know, you know, what's going into that. So you put that all your time against this planning project. I showed you time entry works against the planning project. Um, other times you might make some plans, right? They're kind of the the plans might be a little bit vague, um, you know. But now I need I have it I have an exact uh, an example of how I need those hours to be used, right? And those hours might be used in a specific type of project outside of the planning project. So that's where linked projects come into play, right? And and just so you know. <laughs> Um, if anybody wants to email in and give us a use case of how they think they'll be using the linked projects, we would love to hear it. We're kind of a little bit um, up in the air on, on the linked projects and how people are using them, the value of them. Um, so just like I said, if, if you find that the planning project on its own is going to be a useful tool for you and you have no use for the linked projects, please tell me not here, but in an email, <laughs> um, you know, let us know. Or if you say, I can't use a planning project without a linked project, and here's why, we would love to hear that too. So just so you know, we're, you know, again, we're a little bit, um, I, I go looking for ideas on what about the linked projects, if that will be, if that's helpful at all. Um, but here is where I can go in and say, well, I have, you know, I did allocate those hours for account management. And this is how I, you know, this is what a project that I'm going to use those hours in account management, like a specific use for those, not just again, those, you know, 20 hours a week or whatever I put in there. So I can click on more and I can link an existing project, right? So if somebody, if it, you know, has an existing pro, if there's an existing project out there and I want it to be linked to this planning project, I can do that. Um, if not, I can just kind of like a campaign. If you guys have ever used a campaign, I can go through and I can grab, um, you know, one of my existing templates and I can, you know, create quickly create a project based off of that. So I'm just going to go in and use this template here and just add that. And if I click into it, you know, regular project, right? There's nothing, there's nothing too tricky about this one. And here's my schedule, right? So I definitely said, well, you know what, um, you know, we were, my planning project started out as like kind of a, just a general PR, you know, we're going to do a little updates each and every month, but now I have something really specific that we need to do with that PR. Maybe we have something a little extra, a little above and beyond. So you'll see here again, you know, um, that my, te my template came over and I have this account management for two hours and I have PR for four. Um, if I go in and I assign my account management to my Yosemite Sam, Right. With these matching, the service and the person has to match the planning project. What's going to happen here is since my project is linked to the planning project, it's going to use two hours from the planning project for this project. Right. So I my enough for life of me, even though it was like five minutes ago, I can't remember how many hours I allocated for the planning project. I think it was like 15.44 or something, 16.44 or something like that. It's going to use up two of those hours, right? Because my service and my person matches. That's the way it's going to use hours from the planning project. So I'm going to hit save. Hopefully we're all familiar with regular projects. I'm going to activate it, right? And then I'll just show you what I am. I guess I was in that window. So if I go into my uh, my schedule here and I click here, 
you'll notice again, 14.44, two hours from other projects, right, to give me 14.44 hours. This will also reflect on my Creative Today page, right, which I'm going to show you, I promise. Um, right, so it's, you know, so again, it's using those hours from that this schedule because these two items match, right? So again, if I go into my Creative Today page, I should have two assignments, right? Because I did. And now if you look at this one, it'll say, now remember, I put an hour in here. The, the, um, the planning project schedule will update at the weekly, right? But this one will show, I only have 13.44 hours because I have one hour I worked and two hours that belong here, right? So again, this will also reflect in my staff schedule screen that I have this information, okay? So again, it's not going to overload the person because you linked a project. All right, so I am going to stop there on linked projects. I'm gonna look at some questions here and then I'm gonna talk about the rollover feature that we have and then I'm gonna take questions because we'll be done. Um, So I, I kind of, someone is asking about the overworked. We currently do not take hours from the later months. So like if I'm allocated 10 hours and I work 15, I don't remove five from the next week, you know, um, and say, well, now you only have five this week. We kicked it around. We thought it, the, the first thing we started with was the unused hours, right? Again, these are things that if you find that you want it to do that, then we definitely want you to email in, but we also want you to tell us how you see that happening. For instance, if I worked 15 and I only have 10 and I don't have any hours left, what do you want the system to do? Or where do you want it? Do you want the system to take it out uniformly or do you want it just to take it out from the next week, right? So there's again, some questions and concerns that we had on that one. So you can certainly email in with suggestions on how you feel that it would work. Um, if you link a project to a planning project, can the project also be linked to a campaign? Yes, the regular project can be linked to a campaign. I know that's crazy, but the planning project cannot currently be linked to a campaign. All right, last but not least on what we're talking about with the planning project here. Oh, let me just double check that I'm not missing the Q&A. Okay, last but not least, and I created this last week so that we would all be able to see what it was doing. In my planning project here, you can see one, my hours rollover. When you're setting up your planning project, if you want those unused hours to roll over, I promised you 10, I worked zero. So what do I want the system to do? I want the system to roll those over because again, we have a set amount of hours that we've promised you within this time frame. You have to check the box at the planning project level to automatically roll over unused hours, right? And then what that does is in my schedule, I did this really simply. So there's nothing like super fancy about that. My first week here, I didn't work any hours, right? So they rolled over to the next week. If I don't work any hours this week, they'll all roll over to the week after, right? So they will continue to roll until they get used. Now, somebody might ask, because I, I tested this um, inadvertently, you can actually, if you forget to check that checkbox, you can actually check it after the fact, because I thought I was genius and set up this planning project to automatically roll over so I could dis display this to everybody. I forgot to check the checkbox. Um, so I discovered that yesterday. I checked the checkbox and it did roll over the hours for me. It took, a, it took a minute. It does take a minute to do that, but it did roll over the hours for me. So that was fantastic. So you can actually see that this is what it will do. Now, again, if I had, if I had 10 hours and I work five, it'll only ro roll over five, right? So again, it's going to roll over the unused hours on the planning project, right? Um, so that is the planning project as a whole. Again, you know, there's no, there's no trick to the planning project when it comes to the basic of like, let's say, um, I'm gonna just go back into this one, you know, looking at your billing screen, looking at your transaction screen, right? You know, things like miscellaneous costs, files, deliverables, spec sheets, things like that. All of that is, is the same on the planning project as it is on any regular project that you might be in. All right, so that is my, I'm done with my spiel on the planning project. I think I covered just about everything. I'm a little behind on updating the um, help guide um, for the planning project, but I do promise that I, I will start adding more information to that. But if you have any questions or any concerns, you can always email support at workamajig.com. Um, you know, we do, of course, encourage people to send in, you know, any suggestions or, you know, um, 
information that they feel that would make the planning project a more useful tool. But what we always like to see with that is a use case. I mean, you can say it would be nice if if it did something because that's probably true. But we would love to know how you would use that and how it would make, you know, a, again, a use case for how it would be used in your agency. That really helps us know what direction to go in with some of these changes, because people do email in multiple like suggestions that are similar but not the same so that we can take all of that information this is how they would use that this is how this information would um flow through work a jig or something like that and then we're better able to come up you know with you know a, a plan right so um and then somebody asked can you explain a little more examples of how why you would link projects well that kind of goes back to my question where we're not 100% sure why people are linking projects. It was brought to our attention from the beginning that maybe we need to do something, do a feature like that. And we're starting to kind of not under, not really fully understand how people would use that. So I, Kate, I'm very sorry. I, I don't know if I can answer that question. I have actually emailed out a few people and asked them that we got kind of feedback to know that they were using the planning project on and linked projects, I should say, and asking them how they use them and why, and we haven't gotten a lot of feedback on that currently. So um, <laughs> so I, I don't know if I have a good explanation. Really the explanation is to say that I have a firm plan on how I want to use those allocated hours in the planning project. Um, that's the best I can come up with right now, but if there is anyone out there who's on this webinar or knows someone who's using the planning project that wants to give me, again, more information on how they're using successfully the linked projects, I would love to hear about it. And we could set up a call and talk about it. Um, so, and then so, somebody's just now saying they link projects in the same series. So email blast would be one project, then leave behind the flyer, um, then flyer would all be link. So there's one reason why they would do that. So again, like I said, there's a lot of different reasons and I love to hear them because then I, you know, I, then I can sit there and say, oh, okay, the link that projects is valuable to people. And then this is how we want to do it and carry it forward. So I don't have really, some people have some really good examples of the linked projects. Um, um, like she's saying, keeping everyone, everything kind of together, you know, in a, in a like kind of a thread, I guess, almost like that would be one reason to do that. All right. Anybody else have any questions? I'm going to sit on here. All those silences, you know, it kills me, but I'm going to sit on here for just another minute or two. I'm going to see if anything comes up um, else on the chat. And um, I hope I'm saying your name right, Janelle, but thank you for your input on how you use link projects. If you ever want to email support and give us more details, I would love it. Um, just because, again, I want to make sure that what we're doing with that is is being is valuable and flowing through how you picture it to flow through um, in work magic. But any other questions, any other concerns, please, you can you know put them in the chat for the next, let's say, three minutes, and I'll be happy to answer them. If not, you always can email support at workamajig.com. Um, those emails, will, of course, will go to your account manager, but your account manager can always forward those to me. I'm kind of, you know, gathering up all this information. This is, like I said, one of the newest parts of work in Majig. So, you know, we feel like it's an extremely useful tool, but is there always a way to make things better? Of course there is, right? So we value your input. So just let me know. Again, three more minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on this chat. If not, it was lovely talking to you all and we might talk soon.
Well, if anybody's left, you guys have a fantastic day and a fantastic rest of your week. It was good talking to you and we'll talk soon. Thanks.